Co-President Nigel Farage, Freedom and Democracy. Thank you. Mr. Barroso, you, you told us this morning that the European Union is an inspiration. And whilst you admitted to there being one or two little economic problems, you made it perfectly clear that jobs and growth were to follow, that everything is going well. In fact, you painted a vision that a new period of European renewal is upon us. Now, as a former communist yourself, you probably remember the old Soviet leaders getting up to give their speeches and telling everybody that there was a record harvest or that tractor production figures were terribly good. And, and, and they, of course, believed that history was on their side. In fact, President Khrushchev got up and said to the West, we will bury you. You know, so much did he believe in his own union. Well, now, of course, we look back at that and we laugh. And I think in our tomorrows, people will look back at you and they will say, how on earth did this unelected man get all of this power? And how did Europe's political class sitting in this room decide that the community method, that the community method should replace national democracy? I think people will look back in astonishment that we've surrendered democracy. But what you want to do is to say, right, we have a European Union, and what we're going to have to do now is have more of it. So as an architect, and you're one of the key architects of the current failure, what we're going to do, even though everything to date has been wrong, we're going to do more of the same. Now, I thought that was a definition of madness. I can't believe that is a rational response to any situation in which you find yourself. And, f and far from it being a state of the union, I would argue that the union is in a state. Because just look at the confusion. We've got you as the President of the European Commission. We've got a President of the European Parliament. We've got my old friend Herman Van Rompuy, who is the permanent President of the European Council. We've got the Poles. They're now presidents temporarily of the European uh, Council. We've got presidents all around this room. Goodness me, even I'm a president. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, sure. I'm not sure what the collective noun for presidents is. Perhaps an incompetence, I don't know. Uh, but certainly, when you take away democratic accountability, it's clear nobody really is in charge. And it's developing as a union of intolerance. Anybody that stands up here and dares to give a political view that is different to the received wisdom is written off as mad, insane, violent, fascist. We've heard it for years from these people. And the intolerance is so deep that when we get referendums in France, the Netherlands and Ireland that reject your view, you see it as a, as a political class, as a problem to be overcome. So I'm very worried about the whole root of this union. There is a new nationalism that is sweeping Europe. You want to abolish the nation states, in your case, Mr. Schultz, perhaps because you're ashamed of your past, and you now want this flag, this flag, and a new anthem to replace nation states, and you don't care how you get there. If you have to crush national democracy, if you have to oppose popular referendums, you just sweep this aside and say that it's populism. Well, it's not, it's democracy. And what is sweeping Northern Europe now, starting off in April with that amazing result in the Finnish general election, is there is a new democratic revolution sweeping Northern Europe. It's not anti-European. It wants a Europe of trade. It wants a Europe of cooperation. It wants a Europe where we can do student exchanges, where we can work in each other's capital cities. It wants those things. But it does not want this European Union model Frankly, you are all now yesterday's men. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. President Farage. I have a big number of uh, blue cards to you. <laughs> but I will give you only one possibility to answer. Colleague Duff, blue card question. One. Oh, President, uh, oh, President oh, F -F Farage. Oh, what, pray, is the answer, your answer, of Little Britain to the challenges of globalisation? 
Well, this point is often made that a country like Britain is only 62 million people and aren't we better off being part of a big European club so that we can have more of a voice on the world stage? Funny that, isn't it? Here's Britain, the world's fifth largest trading nation, who are now prohibited, prohibited from going in to World Trade Organization talks because all of that is done on our behalf by an unelected European Commissioner. And the answer actually, Mr Duff, is that an independent Britain that trades and cooperates with her European neighbours in an age of globalisation would be able to forge her own trade relationships across the world and it would make sense for a country like ours to start off with the English-speaking world who share common law, our own kith and kin in the Commonwealth, who we turned our backs on so shamefully. Uh, thank you. The next speaker... Non-attached... Uh...